There's, there's a bumblebee in my garage, which I don't want to do anything with him. I hope he'll, he'll find a way out. But anyways, <laughs> uh, thanks for tuning in guys. And uh, yeah, well, welcome to the channel. So today is going to be a start of a new project, a new build. And it's one of those things that <laughs> I didn't plan to buy this car, but I just came up uh, on my radar and I like, Mmm, this is this is really good offer and I kind of like wanted this car. Actually, I had a similar car on the channel before, but it was a little bit of a, well, a handful of things that I wasn't ready to tackle with it, so I just sold it. Uh, and if you watched the previous episode, you already know what I'm talking about. So without further ado, meet the new car E36 saloon four door whatever you want to call it uh i guess it's a little bit different um depends on the country uh but yeah it's got four doors it's got a lousy m40 i think this is m43 single cam engine 1.8 yeah we have some power baby 1.8 uh, manual we have a stick let's have a walk around and you can see what's going on on the front uh if you don't know the uh, reg plates in the uk this is a uh, 1999 and yeah absolutely bog standard e36 which are getting quite rare in this part of the world a lot of them are uh, used for drifting they were cheap uh, now they're not that cheap anymore and um, when I saw this car actually I bought it from from an auction I was just like I have a habit of browsing all the auctions I'm just <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's 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 dumb guys honestly like if you want a cheap car don't go on any of the auctions it's such a gamble and you never some sometimes it pays off but more more often than not it's not worth it uh unless unless you know what you're doing and you're professional or like myself you just don't mind a little bit of work and um you just enjoy doing it so anyways um as i said continue our walk around the car blue color nice the the paint has faded in some areas the lacquer is peeling i think this wing is the worst bit on the car it's probably was i think at some point it has been re-sprayed or something because this is not typical behavior for factory clear coat like this type of bubbling and fading usually just peeling off in large chunks but yeah this this is yeah definitely not factory anyways uh as i said i got it from an auction nobody was bidding on it uh, the car was advertised as non-runner uh and there was no other damage so i thought okay the worst case i would need to find uh m43 i'm gonna call it m43 you can correct me in the comments but for just simplicity's sake m43 single valve 1.8 you, you know what i'm talking about so the car was advertised as a non-runner and um, judging from the pictures there weren't any signs of major rust like your usual signs around the arch as you can see this arch is pretty much pristine like there's a little bit of paint missing that was touched up but other than that 
it's going down to the seal and this is where they get quite bad but even this example everything here is very solid it's just the top layer of paint starting to coming off very easy to repair doors all nice and clean the seals very solid the jacking points we still have this little pads all around the car i know that there is another weak spot behind this wheel arch but the wheel arch is still in place and uh, i had a quick look and everything looks fine we're actually gonna jack the car up and i'll do a proper um look under the car with you guys and um, there's some bubbling going on here but again i can't even like press through it it's very very solid like it might need a little bit of cleaning up but overall it's not too bad so and as I said, there was no other damage, like mechanical damage to the car. Uh, every, every single panel is straight, everything is looking fine. There's some things and dents, like this, this little bit of rust going on here. This rear panel, I think there's a bit of a... You can't really tell because the car is very dusty, but there's a bit of a crease here, a little dent. I think there's another dent somewhere here but overall the shell is very straight so I thought E36 shell rust free-ish you can't go wrong with that um, and yeah I put a bit not not too much honestly because I think there was another guy bidding on it but there was like literally two bids on the car for the entire thing and like if I win it, I win it. Uh, the worst case, I'll have to swap an engine or just 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 make it run. Basically, uh, as I said, it was non-runner. It sat somewhere since 2019, I think. And uh, yeah, when I got it, all it was actually, if you, if you know your e E36 is, I think it's quite common uh, when the car is just sitting for a long, long time the fuel pump just gets rusty and it seizes and it stops pumping so this is exactly what happened usually you can get away with just like a few light taps on the pump and it frees itself usually it works but in this case it didn't the, the pump was done like it wasn't doing anything and you can see the witness marks where i was hitting it with the hammer uh a little bit more than i should have but I haven't damaged the, the pump itself, honestly, it wasn't doing anything, so I just bought a new pump, put the pump in, which is right here in case you wondering, this is where the, the pump is sitting, it's right behind the driver, you still got the, well, the old crusty, you can see how brittle it is, like, it's just... This is the old filter from the pump that I took out. Uh, yeah, I replaced it and believe it or not, the car just started like half a turn. So the engine was fine. Everything was fine. Um, the car is running and it's driving. Nothing, nothing's really wrong with it, except when I received it. Um, well, first of all, two, two things. Uh, there is a light, the ABS light on the dash and I did the diagnostic and it says the front passenger ABS sensor, that's our number one priority. The other priority is when I received the car, the rear control arms were bent and I think it happened during the loading because usually on auction sites they don't really bother with being gentle with your newly acquired car they just like forklift boom on the trailer off you go the rear control arms are bent um camber arms uh so the wheels currently i don't know if you can tell this wheel is actually not as bad as the other one but you can tell there's a bit of positive camber and the other wheel is a lot worse uh so i need to replace um 
those to Canva Arms, either with uh, stock ones or maybe get some cheap ones from Max Speeding Roast for now, just to um, get the camera right, uh, make sure it's straight. Obviously, there is no MOT on the car. It's been set since the well, the last MOT has expired. I think the last MOT expired back in like 2020, so about four years ago. Uh, yeah. Other than that, it's relatively solid-ish, but as I said, we're gonna jack the car up and do a proper dive underneath it and ex just 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 investigate uh, what needs doing, uh, what we need to replace for the MOT, uh, what do we need to do to make the car roadworthy because it's the plan number one. Uh, well, step number one in my plan, the overall plan, uh, we can discuss my ideas in the end so you can have a better understanding of what I have in mind and how far, I, I, I don't know how far do I wanna go with this car to be honest, so we'll see. Anyways, uh, let's have a look around and uh, I have a little bit of a challenge for you guys. If you can, leave in the comments, how many miles do you think this car done in its life since 1999? So be my guest. And you can, you can just write a range, not, not a crazy range from like zero to 507 miles, something a little more plausible within like a few hundred uh, miles if you can and I'll give you some clues uh, which you might use to identify the right mileage so let's jump inside and see what condition the interior is in uh, and yeah as you can tell we have we have all the handles then not broken not snapped uh, I think that we're missing a little bit of trim here the door itself, we have the speaker in place, the door card is, well, it's your typical E36 uh, issue with the uh, cloth just coming off because the glue is, well, not doing its gluing thingy. The headliner, again, very typical for the E36, not just E36, but E46 uh, has the same issue. It's just not sticking anymore, so we would need to address this. We have our sun visors, the glass is still there, everything is there. Little thingies, all the switches. We have the entire dash, no cracks. And it's black, which is nice. The interior is black minus the, the headliner, which we will, I guess, respray in black at some point or recolor it. Uh, steering wheel, you can see there's a wear on the leather, but overall you can see like, you can still see the texture on the steering wheel. It's not the leather texture, but there's some kind of like grooves going along so i guess it's just to make it more grippy i don't know uh yeah the bmw logo is still kind of there it's got some sign uh, signs of peeling but nothing crazy everything is working you can see that even the paint is still kind of like pretty much intact there's uh the fan one is a bit faded and i think the auto the o is kind of like coming off but everything else is working sliding turning all the switches are working the well the windows well I need to put the, the battery on but everything is working the I'm not sure about the e-brake to be honest it might work it might not the car came with the drum brakes at the rear uh, so we need to address that at some point I want to convert it to like proper disc brakes uh, because drum brakes let's be honest it's uh, well not that great uh, the rear kind of the same picture we have um, manual window regulators we have relatively clean ish rear bench Everything is, yeah, 
I think this is actually a cover. This is not the real. Yeah, the real bench is under this cover. Uh, the seats as well. You can see the seat. The passenger seat is actually in relatively good condition. Like the foam is not broken. Well, you can't say it on the video because I'm I'm touching it. But if you if you, you well you can't feel it. But I can, and I can tell you, it's not broken. The bolsters are still intact. We will take these covers off just to check the. Oh yeah, another telltale sign of the mileage is the gear stick. So this is neutral. You can tell there's a bit of play. If I put it in gear, still a little tiny bit of play, but again for a BMW box, something to be expected. Uh, they all have. In my opinion, excessive play uh, from from the factory. Uh, what else? How can I help you to tell um, the right mileage? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can start the engine. Uh, well, yeah, engine bay. Maybe it will help you. Let's have a look on the the bonnet and actually the boots. We haven't looked under the well under in the boots. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, M43, I'm gonna call it M43, I honestly don't know if it's M44. I think M44 had two valves, but this is com um, comes with a single valve, uh, valve, yeah, cam valve, uh, cam valve. Single camshaft, what I'm talking about, single camshaft, one camshaft. On the head uh yeah you can see that everything is well dusty <laughs> obviously but other than that nothing is broken everything is factory well this is my obd adapter i was checking it the crash panel the front slam panel no damage whatsoever Everything looks factory. Even the grill looks like the chrome. Looks nice. We have a little bit of a boo boo on our driver's side uh, headlights, which we will need to address. The indicators are a little bit faded. Again, the car is 25 years, years old. The front bumper missing this little thingy we got one on the other side not on this side the number plate as i said this is 1999 yeah i don't know if it helps but i think you have enough clues to deduce the oh, like rough mileage at least the ballpark anyways oh yeah spare we have a spare wheel you can see i don't know if it's been used actually Probably, yeah, yeah, you can tell it's been used. Uh, there's some rocks and small cuts on the rubber, but it's not in the worst condition. And we have two spares for some reason. Hold on, I'm gonna bring some light. So yeah, the tools, I don't think we have any. Yeah, unfortunately, they were taken out by someone which you don't like. The weather strip is, well, this is, I think this is the factory cat. Yeah, this is where it's cutting. There's a bit of a, well, damage. Someone tried gluing it up, but other than that, it's not smashed. It's still probably ceiling relatively nice um, the boot itself we have an extra spare let's take it out well again a bit problematic to do it with one hand is it that big well I mean the ball that's holding it I thought it would be easier to undo it anyways I'll do it later I don't think you want to watch me undoing a very long thread 
uh, just to get the spare out. We still have a jack. The factory jack is there. In this compartment we have uh, what I assume might be a bonnet strut because the boot is a bit shorter. Yeah, E36. Yeah, I, I assume it's just the bonnet strut. What else? Uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it for the boot. And again, I don't see any signs of dreaded rust, which is again always good. Here, it's looking fine. There's some dents on this panel, which I'm not very happy about. You probably can't even see it, but it's definitely there like there's a dent here and it's just going it's quite quite a long crease so anyways by the way this guy is ready prepared to accept a cd multi-changer which which is very good we might we might upgrade for that one uh this side i still have the <laughs> uh the auction thingy non running driving yeah you can you can tell this this wheel is kind of like sitting like this and uh yeah it's got lots of positive camber uh everything here is yeah all the door jams same color nothing criminal yeah we're missing this trim on that side which again would be nice to find and replace but yeah, this is kind of it. So guys, leave your comment, how many miles has it done, and yeah, oh, the final thing, let's start it and see how it sounds. Uh, maybe it will be another another clue for you. Oh, totally, totally forgot, uh, the car is slick top, so no dreaded sunroof, which again, quite a rare thing. Um, to find that that was another reason why I kind of like stuck with the shell and was like, oh yeah, I need to bid on it. Right. Yep. I hope it's got enough tools to actually crank it. Uh, it's been sitting here for a oh, good three, three months, I think. Didn't have time, energy or motivation to work on it, to be honest, because that thing was taking it all. And um, yeah, the uh, the series on the E, well, this is that that for, um, I'm not proud of, of it. Um, I think I was just forcing myself working on it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like the car, don't get me wrong. Uh, now I do like it, but when I got it, it was just like one thing after another a lot of unpleasant surprises oh where did i put the the key uh, right i had it in my pocket typical anyways as i was saying the z4 series not not my favorite one but i want to continue doing it because i really I really like the car now and I have some ideas and uh, hopefully now with a bit more energy <laughs> and enthusiasm um, it's gonna be a lot more interesting for me to to make those videos and for you to watch it so we'll see anyways I covered the mileage so you cannot you cannot chew guys I hope it's not in the gear no it's not in the gear first time and we barely have any fuel left in it which is good I'm trying to drain as much fuel as possible to well I'm planning to drop the fuel tank and um, yeah the less fuel the better so yeah as you can tell It's running very smoothly and uh, yeah, there are no leaks, no weird noises, 
There's no smoke coming from the cob. See, it's absolutely fumeless, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, no, I think overall that that was one of those rare occasions where it actually paid out. Like you gambled and like, oh actually it's not too bad i'm not saying that it's a huge win it's not your rare unicorn car that will worth thousands or tens of thousands in the near future but it's a really nice base to work on as i said it needs it needs disc brakes it needs lots of other things it needs a better engine let's be honest 1.8 not gonna cut it um but yeah uh without further ado let's inspect the underbody because as i said i've never actually looked under it so we might find some surprises um let's check it up and dive under it it's in there guys and while getting it it in its current position i found well as expected remember when i said this corner looked a little bit patchy aka rust ridden it is a little bit it's not the worst case but it's getting there so we need to address this corner first and uh, seal it up clean well clean it up seal it up there's still metal in there and i think quite good metal to be honest and there's not much rust there is some rust inside but we can treat it from the inside out and hopefully it will prevent the rust the rot coming through and just just spreading in general because everything else is solid so so far this is the worst part on the entire car and i'll show you why so this surface we just need to take the wing off clean it up probably will find a lot more grime and potentially some nasty surprises under this wheel arch but i doubt that it doesn't look that bad if it was it would have rusted through and this type of the rust is actually coming from the outside not from the inside like this is the inside out rust this is the outside rust this is how you can tell when it's coming from the inside it's just bubbling out when it's coming from the outside it's just like this orange brown color and obviously there are some bubbles but usually the inside out looks more like this uh yeah as i said probably we'll have to get all of this eco off clean it up maybe put a few patches but overall honestly this is very clean right this is probably the worst thing on the entire car this is how it's looking while well, the gearbox is just caked in old oil so i don't know if it's the gearbox or the rear main from the engine but it's all pretty much covered in oil like Literally everything is covered in oil. I guess it's your typical BMW. Uh, the front suspension doesn't look too bad. I don't know if you can pick it up, but uh, it's in a relatively good shape. Like these bushings, they are probably old, but I can't see them splitting or separating. I mean, I need to do a proper road test, but overall it doesn't look too bad engine mounts might need replacing just because they're old everything else besides being covered in uh, 100 years old oil it's looking surprisingly good checking point number two how are we doing how are we doing we're doing exceptionally well i can't even well i can barely move it but it's sitting really really well so i'll try to pop it out later and uh, check how it's doing 
underneath the trailing arm pocket. Again, well, besides that spider, it's looking really, really well. I think, yeah, the trailing arm brackets are still covered in factory paint, which is amazing considering the age of the car. The trailing arms, again, they still have traces of the old paint, which is nice. The fuel cell strap, fuel tank strap is a little bit crusty, but again, still got some factory paint on it. I think this hit shield is a little bit tired will need to be replaced or I don't know, maybe I'll find a way to reuse the, the brackets. Okay, there's a bit of surface rust behind the fuel tank. That's that's one of the reasons why I wanna, why I want to drop the fuel tank. Hold on, I'm just trying to get the lighting right. Um, but as you can tell, there's a bit of rust forming right there which is not ideal the eco is splitting here letting moisture in and yeah you can tell it's starting to to corrode probably this sim is a bit it's a bit rusty but we'll give it clean remove this sealant not the entire thing i don't want to make the same mistake i made working on the 350z if you remember, I was stripping the entire undercoating, which was a bit unnecessary. It wasn't like a proper race car. So if you don't plan racing your car, prepping it for, I don't know, some competition, you don't have to strip the entire undercoating. Just spots like this, where it starts to fail. That's the area that you want to address. Everything else, I would say just Clean it, wipe brush it. If it's not coming off, don't peel it off. That's my that's my personal advice, and that's how I'm going to treat this car. Going back, we have, I think, well, not I think. I'm 100% sure it's a small case, rear diff, not particularly grimy. I mean, clearly it's been leaking some oil, but not too bad the exhaust itself even though it looks tight it looks like the rear section has been replaced at some point still have the cat which is there and again something that in the future will be easier to work with it doesn't have the uh, downpipe cat or the manifold cat so it's it's a very 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 simple setup uh what else i think on this side, it's pretty much it. Let's go on to the other side of the car and check the jacking points there. Maybe we'll find something, something nasty there. Oh. I really need to invest in uh, the quick jacks at some point because jacking the car up and just leaving it on the sands, well, well, there's nothing wrong with it. It's working. It's just so much work and. Uh, Ah, uh, not my favorite job ever. So this side, yeah, it's a, it's a little bit more loose. You can see I can wiggle it more. There's something stuck in there, like a bit of plastic. Which doesn't belong there. Well, we'll get out there later. Same seal, it's got a little bit of dent in here. You can see the floor, it's kind of like straight, 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 and boom, dent. The fuel strap is a lot better, no corrosion. I mean, surface rust, but other than that, it's pretty good. Let's have a look at, let's have a look at the trailing arm pocket. Uh, Sorry for the lack of light, but I must say that it's looking again remarkably clean, no rot whatsoever. 
the bushing looks a little bit tight though so we will be replacing i think we will be replacing the trailing arm regardless because the uh, the rear disc brake conversion it's not gonna work with the drum brakes as far as i know i need to double check maybe they have the uh, the bracket for the uh, the caliper but i doubt that so that's something that we will need to investigate in the future uh again behind the fuel tank you can see where the rust started to set in again nothing nothing too critical it's a lot well it looks at least a lot better than my c50z the fuel lines again look i mean they're grimy but as you can see this is plastic but even the metal ones they're still kind of like covered in the factory coating which is nice it's like rust proof uh, right uh, oh yeah you can see where the camber arm was bent that's what I was referring to when I said it was just sitting a little bit wonky the spring bucket arm or the I actually don't know the name of this arm but it's looking again remarkably clean i'm gonna use remarkably a lot in this one because honestly for 25 year old car it's very clean super clean oh there's a paper clip <laughs> stuck in there well that's interesting yeah the the bushings in the anti-roll bar they need doing they're all just just dry rotted to be honest all cracking the subframe while not looking particularly great still reasonably reasonably good looking i'd say it's a good looking subframe if i say myself yeah this thing you can see every single mounting point is just ripped off i don't know if we can find a replacement probably we will i don't want to i mean the current subframe is just cable tied to the subframe heat shield cable tied to the subframe in a couple of spots but it's not it's not the best solution and uh We'll definitely replace it in the future if I can find a new one. If it can't, if it can't, I don't know if they still if they still being produced or not. But it would be nice to get a clean one, uh, put it in. Yeah, moving along. As I said, everything is caked in oil, which, to be fair, considering the climate, it might be. <laughs> A good rust proofing measure. The oil filter looks fresh, so I guess it, it has been replaced at some point, not that long time ago. It doesn't have any oxidation or crust. The fuel lines, the brake line that goes towards the rear, looking fine. The floor panel, everything is nice and solid. Getting closer to the final jacking point again, very sturdy. I can't even move it, which is a good sign. Uh, yeah, I think uh, overall it's a lot better than I expected. And as I said in the beginning, that this is one of those gamble auction cars that actually worked out relatively relatively good obviously it's your box standard 1.8 saloon and i i know that some people prefer the coupes or coupes whatever you want to call them two doors but honestly i i have a soft spot for for those even though right now all my cars are convertible <laughs> um I do like my four-door sedan saloon uh yeah there's something cool about the four doors just looking a little bit i don't know longer 
um, having more presence on the road and just just it's a cool looking car don't get me wrong I I, I love my four doors um, I might get myself a five series at some point if I <laughs> I need to sell something first I've got too many cars right now as it is and I keep talking about buying more cars which is well doesn't make any sense but if you're a car guy there's no such thing as too many cars right let's get under uh, oh no not under I don't want to spend more time under it everything else is yeah the box down at 1.8 Ooh. cool so as I said we are keeping the car well we are you, you and me guys um, we're gonna keep it the plan for now is undecided I have a few a few ideas about it and the ideas I'm gonna share with you guys in this video and you can comment on just tell me what you think I probably won't listen to you sorry but <laughs> I just I just want to um, have some back and forth with you guys with other BMW enthusiasts and people who build their cars just have your input a little bit so plan number one keep it simple uh, do whatever everyone does and swap M52 in it um, 2.5 2.8 if we can find it the whole swap keep it very factory looking maybe put some cam valve cam valves why why keep i keeping keep calling it valve cam valves camshafts camshafts that's what i'm referring to put some high lift camshafts make it like very brevy motor and and just just enjoy it i don't want to turn it into a drift car this is uh too nice of a shell to ruin it i don't want to put like wide body on it or anything like that just nice clean looking e36 m52 h period came in this body in this time so it's going to be very oem plus style build that's idea number one kind of liking it uh nothing wrong with it has done before many many times it's working very easy the engines are getting pricey but again they're still in that price range where it kind of makes sense um another option again staying within the bmw family swap m54 the one that i've got in my e46 three liter a little bit new engine uh double vanos system Put um, the M54 manifold on it and just enjoy it. Again, NA power, plenty of torque, nice engine. I've got it on my, as I said, E46. Nice, nice little motor, nothing wrong with it. Uh, a little newer, has some weak spots, uh, a little bit more <sighs> electronics that I, I don't mind doing with it, but I don't think I will ever use like flat shift or rev matching like I don't need drive by wire but you can get M54 B30 cheaper than M52 right now so we'll see we'll see if I find the whole swap kit like the engine the gearbox ECU ancillaries everything kind of like one package for a good good price I think it's still a very good idea so it's like this is idea 1.5 so Keep it within the BMW family. I don't want um, a V8 simply because I like working on my cars and I like having room under the bonnet just to have everything accessible. I really hate cramped engine bays. Not not my not my thing. Um, so yeah, V8 BMW engine not gonna happen. That's definitely not an option for me. I was thinking about swapping the uh, B M20 B20 into it uh, the one that came out of my Z4 uh, it's blown it needs rebuilding I was thinking putting forged con rods forged pistons make a, like 300 wheel ish engine 
uh, drop it in, inside of this because this is four cylinder, this is four cylinder. It will fit quite nicely under it and um, it's a relatively light engine so overall it's going to be a very nice and fun car to drive and you can see the engine being four cylinder is sitting pretty much in line with the strut hours meaning that the the weight of the car is kind of like shifted towards the, the wheelbase uh, there's not much hanging behind the, the wheelbase which is again really cool really fun um, I was playing around with the idea of keeping the M43 again sorry if I'm wrong with the uh, model of the engine but I'm gonna keep calling it M43 and uh, turboing it just making it stock looking with a turbo fun little car nothing crazy like trying to squeeze maybe 200 odd horsepower maybe um but it's a lot of effort time it's not cheap and you're kind of limited uh on the plus side the engines you can get them anywhere they're really really cheap and accessible and yeah for 100 quid you can get another engine so if it blows no big deal but i don't really want to do much with this engine i don't know we'll see it's, it's still it's still an option so let me know what you think another option uh staying within the four cylinder range but can like be less oem or let's call it pure bmw is i've got something here it's not an engine but it's part of the engine and it kind of makes sense i couldn't find it anywhere i'm sure it's been done like every single swap you can think of probably has been done already so uh i'm sure i just couldn't find one online that uh yeah i just couldn't find one and probably doesn't make much sense power wise um again because it's again 1.8 um but it might be something interesting and as i said i haven't seen it and um might be cool just might be cool so just listen to me this is a valve cover from a 1.8 MX-5 engine and as you can tell, well, obviously it's gonna sit a lot further into the engine bay, but it's a four-cylinder engine, it's very compact, it's small it's very, very common in the UK, you can get 1.8 uh the latest engine the newest one i think it's like from 2.5 mb for like 300 pounds uh running driving everything like in ancillaries maybe even with a gearbox to be honest five speed six speeds are quite expensive but it's doable and um lots of aftermarket support putting a turbo on it again lots of aftermarket support has been done before very easy and relatively i'm not gonna use the word cheap because nothing is cheap nowadays but it's relatively affordable and it's probably gonna be in the price range of maybe slightly more no i'm, I'm lying it's gonna be slightly more than m52 swap but it's not gonna be off by a mile it's gonna be like maybe 500 quid more expensive okay maybe a grand more expensive than swapping m52 uh it's not gonna be pure bmw it's gonna be a mazda engine mazda mx5 engine <laughs> in a bmw uh pushing about 250 um again not a eye-watering number but uh turbo noises uh fun and a cool factor as i said it's not a swap that you can see every single day um and i think it's sh it should fit relatively easy because it's got the rear sump um the another another benefit is the um, intake is on the other side and the um, exhaust is on this side so we don't have to fight the steering column the intake the downpipe will be much easier to route down here and the exhaust and everything it, it all kind of makes sense uh i already kind of like did my research a little bit so this is idea number three um 
some might say it will ruin the platform. Uh, it won't be BMW. Uh, and I don't know if I want to go with it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not purist by any means, but I, d I don't know if I want to experience the M52 in its purest form and then do something else. And I do do not want to turbo a BMW engine uh, M52 or um, 54. Simply because heat management, uh, they get really hot. You can get lots of power out of them, but I don't think at this stage I'm ready for that. And I don't need that much power, honestly, like about 300. That That's that's the the top limit for me right now. I don't, I don't want to push crazy numbers. I just want nice drivable power that I can use on B roads and just, just having a fun car as i said i'm not gonna drift it it's just a car to drive and like with style and steez and just like be be very cool looking gun well gangster <laughs> driving e36 <laughs> but you, you you know what i mean just a cool looking e36 with uh cool noises uh yeah so that's kind of the plan so just to quickly repeat myself idea number one m52 swap it enjoy it nothing crazy make it clean uh m54 b30 same same ballpark and 1.8 mx5 engine with with a turbo obviously um or maybe you want to see me trying to turbo the m43 and see how long it will last but as i said i'm not particularly down to this option simply because it's feels like a waste can be done i've seen it done could be fun i don't know if you think that can be a good option you have good examples or just blogs or builds that uh, you can send my way uh, please do that would be cool if uh, not maybe you have a better option as, as i said leave it in the comments uh, but don't 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 tell me about the sorry that was just like weird noise um k uh not k k k20 k it's the nissan k the honda the honda engine k k20 k24 uh i know it's a fun engine i know it can be done i know it's four cylinder really cool very reliable can be turbo awesome engine it's outside of my price range. Not the engine itself, but the work, the conversion plates, the adapter plates, the uh, the uh, the intake. Everything is so expensive. And again, it has been done before. There is no cool factor to it. Um, it's doable. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Would be cool, but money-wise, I don't think it's worth it. And uh, as I said, it's been done before. Um, yeah. Other than that, and again, I might, I might consider if you can, if you can change my mind, saying like K K twenty K twenty four. I know a guy who knows a guy who has a deal. We can, we can, we can do it. We'll see. Uh, but right now, this is this is kind of it. Um, I don't know what else to say except thanks for watching and uh yeah you're gonna be seeing more of the e36 uh we're gonna start with the chassis then suspension brakes and uh yeah it's gonna be a long build so as i said hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one thank you guys